So in this video, let us continue to solve more problems based on trigonometric ratios of compound angles. All right, here we've got a question which reads like this. If cot alpha equals 1 by 2, don't worry about alpha, beta, all those things. They're just another angle like theta. You know, theta, you can't use theta for all the things. When they say alpha and beta, it means they're different angles. So that's why, you know, they say alpha and beta. So when cot alpha equals 1 by 2 and secant beta equals minus 5 by 3, where alpha is greater than pi, which is 180 degrees. So let's straight away work out where it lies. 180 degrees, it's lesser than 270 degrees. So this is what? Third quadrant. And beta is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. So this lies in the second quadrant. So we need to find the value of tan of alpha plus beta. So we don't have to worry about the value of tan alpha because we've got the value of cot alpha. Tan alpha is nothing but the reciprocal of cot alpha, right? So tan alpha is just going to be 2. So see, if we have to find tan of alpha plus beta, alpha plus beta, we first have to know the formula for tan alpha plus beta, which is tan of alpha plus tan of beta divided by 1 minus tan of alpha times tan of beta. So we have tan alpha, which is 2, right? Because tan alpha is nothing but 1 by cot alpha. So therefore, tan alpha is going to be equal to 2. So we have tan alpha. We need tan beta. Now beta lies in the second quadrant. Beta lies in the second quadrant where sine is positive, not tan. So therefore, tan is going to be negative there. All right? So, how are we going to find that? We have sec, right? There is an identity which involves tan and sec. 1 plus tan square beta equals sec square beta. So, tan beta is going to be equal to negative of square root of sec square beta, secant square beta, minus 1 negative because beta lies in the second quadrant where tan is negative. So, we have tan beta is equal to minus of sec b, secant b is minus 5 by 3, so sec square beta is going to be 25 by 9 minus 1, solving which we get minus 4 by 3. So, therefore, tan beta is minus 4 by 3. So, solving this, you get tan beta equals minus 4 by 3. So we found the values of tan alpha and tan beta. All we have to do is just substitute it in this formula. So here it is now. We have tan alpha plus beta equal to tan of alpha plus tan of beta divided by 1 minus tan of alpha into tan of beta. So tan alpha is nothing but 2. So 2 plus tan beta is minus of 4 by 3 divided by 1 minus 2 times minus 4 by 3. Solving which, we get 2 divided by 11. So there ends this problem as well as this video. Pretty simple one. All we have to do is the major things that I like to suggest to use that, if you would have noticed in this problem, you know, you had to use this identity, you know, which was done quite some time back. So recall your identities, you know, they'll come to use in any time. It doesn't have to you know, be that particular subject, you know, you're going to keep using them throughout now. So do use them all. Do not wait to learn these. And of course, this main formula here, tan of alpha plus beta, which is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta divided by 1 minus tan alpha into tan beta. And of course, these things should be known. These are the most basic. And this is never going to end. You need to find out every time in which quadrant that particular angle lies, depending on which you're going to find out if a particular trigonometric ratios is going to be positive or negative. So those are the things. Otherwise, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the forthcoming videos with more problems based on trigonometric ratios of compound angles.